Today at ShopDap.com, we're going to be putting wheels on our Project S4. Okay, so we talk, before we show you the wheels we're going to be installing on the car, we're going to talk real briefly about offset on this vehicle. So let's get a better angle at this wheel and tire so we can look at that. Okay, so here we are on the driver's side wheel. And offset is actually how far out the wheel sticks from your from your hub assembly itself and so offset's kind of complicated but but essentially the basic understanding of it is going to be that the lower the number the further out the wheel is going to be and the higher the number the further in the wheel is going to be now there's a lot of variables that come into play because wheel width and the type of wheel creates different clearance and that type of stuff but essentially that's how we're going to do so as you can see here with this vehicle lowered we have h&r sports rings on there we do have our diy showing how to do that on this car but you can see that there is some gap here and and you can kind of stick your hand in here and you can see that there is some ability for this wheel and tire to come out to sit more flush with the fender so when people are talking about fitment that's generally what they're going to be referring to is where the wheel sits in relation to the fender and so we're going to want to push this further out now you can do that with spacers or you can do that with a, a wheel and tire combo that that fits more appropriately and it has the default offset already built into it we're gonna be doing uh, a different wheel and tire combo, uh, but if you were to be doing spacers, you can measure by putting a flat surface here and then measuring the distance from, from that flat surface to your tire, and then you can determine your depth that you have to work with. Now, keep in mind, when you have a lowered car, you will have some suspension travel here. So as you're turning, the wheel is gonna turn out and in, and you can have rubbing circumstances if you get to what people would call would be flush you can have a circumstance where the suspension loads up and you have a rubbing issue. Now, with springs like we have here, that can be a problem. With coilovers, you can adjust height if you were to have rubbing uh, to, to get a little higher if you wanted to. Okay, so we have our wheel here and we have our wheel cap puller. And we're gonna take all of our caps off first. These style Audi caps, if you do not have the proper puller, will be nearly impossible to take off without destroying them. You could do it with like a pick or something like that, or maybe needle nose, but you would just chew the heck out of the, these things if you tried it that way. Now, before we go any further, we took one wheel bolt off. We're gonna thread in our wheel stud tool. This is not necessary, but it does help you uh, when you're dealing with uh, Volkswagen Audi wheels and tires that you don't have the wheel just fall off when you take off all the bolts. So now we can just loosen the rest of the bolts. And as that comes off, obviously that stud makes it easy for you to get your wheel and tire off. Okay, so before we install our wheel, I'm gonna talk about hub rings real quick. These hub rings will center the wheel on the hub to make sure that you don't have vibrations. Without this, if the hub is not hub, if the wheel is not hub centric, meaning it fits onto this hub perfectly, being 66.6 .6 for Audi, this particular Audi model and most Audi models, 57.1 for most Volkswagen models, you will have vibration potentially once you tighten the wheels down. Now, it's something that will constantly happen and never go away until you get hub rings. These things don't really do much other than center it and make sure that you're lined up and in place. One thing people ask about is uh, metal ones because they're afraid of melting them or whatever. Once these hub rings are on there and, and the wheel is centered in place, they could disappear and it wouldn't make a difference. The important part is just getting them set in place and the wheel centered on everything beforehand. Once the wheel is bolted down, everything will stay in place and you shouldn't have any movement and it's not really gonna do much in terms of staying on this. So I'm not sure metal ones are necessarily better than plastic, especially in places where you have rust, where, you, where this may get stuck on there and then you're not gonna be able to take it off if you have a metal one or have a hard time taking it off. Whereas a plastic one, you could just break off if that was the case. And we're gonna use that stud tool to help us line up. And then again, normally if you didn't have a stud tool, you it would you'd have to make sure you keep pressure exactly right even on this thing. Otherwise you might end up falling off on you. In this particular case, we don't need to worry. So we can just thread our bolts in. Now, one note I wanna mention about uh, aftermarket wheels, you will wanna make sure that if you're planning to keep your factory wheel bolts, which we are, that you get ball seat uh, wheels. That's, that's the shape of the seat 
uh, on all factory VW and Audi bolts are going to be ball seat, meaning they're shaped like a dome. Uh, conical ones, meaning they kind of have a cone shape to them, which is the other option you're generally gonna find in terms of wheels. Now we're gonna remove all of our other wheels, get them swapped out, and then we can drop down and torque our wheels. Then we'll install our center caps. Okay, so now we're gonna tighten our wheels down and we're torquing to 120 newton meters. And you always wanna to wanna to go across. And I always recommend go across one time and then just go around again, just to make sure nothing loosened up as you were tightening the other ones and make sure you haven't missed any. Now in our case, we're gonna throw on our center cap with these wheels, they have this plate and then this large nut that goes in place, that plate is keyed. And then this big nut will go on and we'll tighten that down. Okay, so here we are now, and I just wanna talk real briefly about the offset of these wheels, because a lot of times people ask questions about different fitments. So here's a good example. Uh, because these wheels, the original wheels on this vehicle were 19 by eight and a half with an offset of 43. And so that would be ET43 and so 19 by eight and a half. Now these wheels are 19 by eight and a half with an offset of 35. So you can see 43 and 35 is there's going to be an eight millimeter difference and that's going to be eight millimeters further out. So as you can see here, the fitment of this is going to be much closer out to the fender than you would be on the factory wheel. So this fitment would be something that would be closer to flush. Uh, I wouldn't consider it to be exactly flush. You'd probably wanna be a little bit further out if you did wanna go with a flush setup, but this is further out, which to me is a more aesthetically pleasing uh, set style that you would have on your wheels. Thank you so much for watching our video on installing wheels on our B8 and a half Project S4. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.